I um, I appreciate that uh, that you were able to sort of let these stories speak for themselves without really having to sort of use any sort of like music cues to sort of like get an emotional response or or like a voiceover to sort of explain. Um, I mean, were those were those stylistic choices that at the beginning you set out to sort of not have those and and or or did you just realize over time that that what you had filmed sort of was enough? Yeah, we um, we really. I mean, that's another funny thing about documentary filmmaking. You know, your stylistic intentions can only be carried so far because you're also left to just what reality gives you. And um, ideally, we wouldn't have had really even any interviews. We wanted it to be, you know, kind of um, an observational documentary as much as possible. But again, because of this need to also like tell people what was going on, or also another thing that we didn't anticipate, well, for a few reasons. One, David passed away before we finished filming with him, so we thought, you know, just when he died, we were in the process of um, scheduling a seven-week shoot with him, just to specifically focus on his work and follow him to the prisons when people were arrested and do all this kind of stuff with him, and we just never got the chance. So suddenly, all those initial interviews we had done, really more as like research shoot, ended up, um, you know, we just needed to pull from those so much more than we ever anticipated. So then we also, like, we didn't want any title cards. At first, I didn't even want to subtitle it. I was really against that idea. But then my mom and other people would watch the cuts and just be like, you have no hope. You absolutely have to subtitle this. Um, but we really wanted it to be, um, you know, as much just our characters speaking um, as uh, sort of naturally and um, candidly as possible. Um, but the music, we also definitely didn't want. I I love music in films. I didn't want, you know, I wasn't like this true. I don't know. I'm a like, purist. I didn't have, yeah, I didn't have this like dogma about not having music or anything. But I, we both really wanted it to be also as kind of organic and natural as possible, and um, to be helping the emotional build with the audience, but not, um, you know, we didn't want it to be. The reason for the emotions we wanted. You don't want to, you don't want to dictate to, be, to people how to feel in a certain. Exactly, way. and so John Mandebach, a very old and very good friend of mine, um, he, whose music I've loved for years, but never had a reason to use or never had a film to put it in. Um, we brought him on like super early on because we wanted some music and, and a lot of the grant application cuts that we were doing, and so he's sort of the only other person that's been on board since uh, more or less day one. Um, and we just both really liked his what he did. He actually never even received a final cut of the film, so <laughs> this is all sort of his temp music, but it's, it, uh, it's what we had to go with because of this rush and all that kind of stuff. But we both um, think it's, it's really good. I don't know. I mean, we're both really happy with his work on the film.